Hi kids, welcome to official story time with Miss Anna. Today we're going to be reading Erandi's Braids, written by Antonio Hernandez Madrigal, illustrated by Tommy de Paola. And we're going to look at the glossary, so we know some of the Spanish words in that book. The first one is Buenos Dias. Buenos Dias means good morning. Erandi Tarascan female name, which means sunrise. Fiesta, party, guaraches, sandals, we peel, blouse. Mama, mother. Mi hija, my daughter. Pazacuaro, Tarascan village in the state of Michoacán. Señor, mister, señora. Mrs. C. Yes. Tortillas. Thin corn cakes. Let's start reading the book. Randy, it's time to wake up. Mama whispered. Roosters were crowing as the orange and crimson colors of dawn spread across the village of Fascuaro in the hills of Mexico. Randy got out of bed washed her face and put on her wipil and skirt. Then, Mama brushed her hair and wove it into two thick braids that fell to her waist. When Mama finished, Arandi helped her prepare the dough for the tortillas. As she mixed and patted, Arandi heard voices from a loudspeaker in the street. Hair, hair, we will pay the best prices for your hair. Come to Miguel's barber shop tomorrow. What is that about, Mama? Randy asked. It is the hair buyers coming up from the city, Mama told her. Why do they want to buy our hair? Randy asked. They say it is the longest and most beautiful in Mexico. Mama explained. They use it to make fine wigs, eyelashes, and fancy embroidery. Mama looked in the old, cracked mirror on the adobe wall. Her own hair fell just below her shoulders. Your hair is much longer and thicker than mine, Erandi. The hair buyers will pay a fortune for your beautiful braids, she said with pride. Her mother's hair is short. That means that she has sold her hair before. Let's see. They sat down to eat their meal of beans and tortillas. Do you remember what day tomorrow is, Randy? Mmm, beans and tortilla, delicious. See, Mama, Randy said, my birthday. She will be seven and Mama was going to take her to the Señora Andrea's shop to pick out a present. Randy hoped she would get a new dress to wear to the village fiesta. They finished eating and got ready to go to the lake. Mama packed their fishing net and put it on her back. Don't forget the buckets, Randy, she said, starting off down the trail. When they arrived at the lake, women and men from the village were already fishing. Erandi's mama unfolded their net. Look, Erandi, more holes. I won't be able to repair it anymore. We need a new net so badly. Then she paused. Soon we will have the money to buy one. That means that she has to wait for her hair to grow before she can buy another net. Randy was surprised. They had so little money. Before she could ask Mama where she would get the money, her friend Isabel ran up. Buenos dias, Randy. Can you come and play? Isabel called. Go, Mama said. We we'll come back and help me sort the fish. Isabel and Randy ran across the fields of flowers. Are you going to the fiesta next Sunday? Isabel asked. The fiesta? 
And Randy remembered her birthday and the new dress she hoped to wear in the procession. But maybe Mama needed the money for the new knit instead. I'm not sure, she said. Throughout the day, Randy went back and forth, playing with Isabel and helping her mama separate the small fish from the large fish. Then it was time to go. Randy was afraid to ask about her birthday, and mama didn't say anything about it or the new net as they walked home. But the next morning, after making the tortillas, mama said, it's time to go to Senor Andrea's shop. And Randy, and Randy smiled. She knew she would have a new dress for the fiesta after all. As they entered the shop in the square, and Randy saw a beautiful doll wearing a finely embroidered yellow dress up on the shelf. Mama saw Randy stare at the doll. Hey Randy, Mama said, what do you want for your birthday? Hey Randy, wanted a doll, but she knew she couldn't have both the doll and a dress. She pointed to a yellow dress, the same color as the dolls. Maybe next year we can buy you a doll, Mama said, as she paid for the dress. After they left the shop, Mama turned to Randy and said, now we will go to the barber shop. And Randy caught her breath. My hair? So that is how Mama is going to get the money for a new net? She's going to sell my braids? Randy shivered at the thought of the barber cutting off her braids, but she didn't say anything to Mama. They reached Miguel's barber shop and went inside. And Randy looked across the room, crowded with women. She ripped Mama's hand and huddled in her skirt. She didn't look at the barber chair, but she couldn't help hearing that sharp snip snip of scissors. Will my hair ever grow back? She worried. The line of women moved slowly, and Randy's heart pounded as she and Mama reached the front. Next person, the barber called out. Gazing at the enormous scissors in his hand, Randy felt her knees tremble, but before she could move, Mama walked to the chair and sat down. I should have known Mama will never sell my hair, Randy thought, as she watched the barber grab a white apron around her mama's shoulders and measure her hair. Your hair is not long enough, she heard the barber say. Her mama's face reddened with embarrassment. Without a word, she got out of the chair and took Randy's hand. As they turned to leave, the barber noticed Randy's braids. Wait, he called out. We will buy your daughter's hair. Mama whirled around. My daughter's hair is not for sale, she said proudly. Then she felt the pull of Randy's hand and looked down. See, Mama, we will sell my braids, Randy whispered. No, Mija, Mama said. You don't have to sell your hair. Randy let go of her hand and walked toward the chair. The woman stared as she climbed up onto the seat. The barber measured her braids and picked up his scissors. Randy closed her eyes. Her hands turned cold when she felt the metal scissors rub against her face and neck and she heard the sharp snip snip. The barber moved to the second braid, and Randy's eyes filled with tears, but she dared not cry. Instead, she asked the barber, Senor, will my hair grow back? Of course, it will grow just as long and pretty as before, he told her. Randy kept her eyes shut until the barber had finished. Then she opened them slowly and looked in the mirror. Her hair reached just below the bottom of her ears. Out in the street, the air was cold on the back of her neck. How strange it felt without her hair. Mama walked beside her, not saying a word. Only the hollow clapping of their warashes broke the silence of the cobblestone streets. Why didn't Mama speak? Was she angry with her for cutting her hair? 
or maybe the hair cutter had not paid enough for her braids. Finally, Erandi peeked at her mama's face and saw she was crying. Forgive me, Erandi. I shouldn't have let you sell your hair, Mama sobbed, wiping her face with an old handkerchief. Now Erandi understood that her mama was not angry with her. She had only been thinking of Erandi's hair. Don't worry, mama. My braids will grow back as long and pretty as before. Your hair was the longest and most beautiful of all, her mama said. Erandi paused for a moment, then asked shyly, Mama, did they pay you enough to buy a new net? See, sí, mija, they pay us more than I expected. We can buy a new net and the doll you wanted. She gave Erandi a big smile, and Erandi had never felt happier. Then, Mama took Erandi's hand in hers, and as the last rays of sun lit up the rooftops, they turned and went back to the square to buy Erandi's doll. And that was the end of the story. Erandi sold her hair and was able to buy Mama some net and also a doll for herself. It was a sad story, but at the end, it had a nice ending. I'll see you guys. Bye.